This is the Unearthing Art Podcast with Michelle Luminato and Beck Lee, where we dig into the messy reality of making art that matters, raw and real conversations about being an artist, navigating the creative process, and expressing our honest and sometimes weird selves. Last week, Michelle, we started our conversation and I was talking about that kind of feeling that I've definitely had when you're just really resisting going to the studio and and getting into it, getting into the work. And we can come up with a lot of excuses around that, like, you know, life's busy, we don't have time, we're not feeling inspired or motivated in some way, and we can, I guess, rationalize why Mm -hmm. that might be happening. Ultimately, it feels like it's like almost a a physical resistance, like an invisible wall we talked about Mm -hmm. where you just really don't want to go into the studio there's something that you're either afraid of or anxious and you can kind of feel disappointed in yourself when you you it repeats over time or when that feeling drags on you can get to feel really stuck and in the last episode we ended up really focusing specifically on how perfectionism I guess and having you know unreasonable or high standards and where that comes from can get in the way of being loose and relaxed and having fun in the studio. But I think after that, we were thinking there was probably even more that we could dive into around that topic of when we're feeling that resistance. Yeah, and I really enjoyed um, having a laugh with you about the differences that we have because of who we are as individuals those expectations and those automatic behaviors that we have um, that, you know, again, we're assuming that everyone feels the same way we do and it's just, it all looks a little bit different for each one of us. Also listening to other artists, I feel like we all have these automatic responses to things. One of the challenges for me, what I'm seeing is we don't always know how that automatic response happens. I mean, it's automatic for a reason. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, you know, when you see a baby, usually you smile, like that's an automatic response, you know, and yeah. you're not like, let me smile at the baby. It's not like a conscious <laughs> thought. So um, what I've seen in my own practice and even in selling my work is like, there's just these automatic things that happens. I was really interested in talking more about that as well and what that actually looks like and kind of just pulling it apart and looking at it from different angles. Yeah, I was thinking as you were describing that, I was thinking, yeah, it's kind of breaking open a little bit those things that we do, as you say, on autopilot yeah. just happens. You know, it's like, I mean, I'd hate to give a, <laughs> I'd hate to reveal something about myself I was here, gonna say, but do, you know, do when tell. you're like, <laughs> <laughs> when you're having a bad day and suddenly you're in front of the fridge having your third Tim Tam, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and those who are not Australian, Tim Tam is a beautiful chocolate. Kind of chocolate biscuit. biscuity thing yeah. that's just yumbo. It's indulgent. Yes, I do believe there's a few of us, full confession, um, <laughs> who use the fridge and, and other tools. I always go to coffee. Oh, I'm like, oh, I think I need a coffee now like yeah. five five coffees later. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's, that's really interesting. And I'm no expert in, you know, psychological behavior, but I am really becoming more aware of my behavior in particular mm. um, and looking at how, you know, how do I end up in that cupboard <laughs> instead of facing the studio. Yeah. And one of the things that was brought to my attention and it's just really kind of clicking for me is when we have these automatic responses like let's say something happens in the studio and we're not really happy with that work you know it's like it it causes angst in us and it's automatically easier to walk away from that and maybe go look at the fridge than it is to be like well what's next you know but then there's this another layer i think that happens which is the emotional response how we feel about that afterwards as well. And we kind of internalize that and we're like, oh my gosh, that was really awful. That was really awful. I don't know, if I go back in there, it's gonna be awful again. I think our brain instantly goes and starts processing what that experience means. And then it it literally gives us, in my mind, this is how it happens, like a go or a stop button. It's mm-hmm. like that experience just taught me like, don't go in there or proceed. And I think it's like right. that stay or go thing happens. And I think knowing these automatic responses happen 
you know, it, it's hard to catch them because they're automatic. But what I'm really interested in looking at more deeply is uncovering that emotional, like separating the emotion from it, literally going like, okay, so I made that really ugly thing. Does that actually mean it will happen again in a real way? Like some, mm. somehow separating the emotional response and what I'm making it mean from the automatic thing that just happened. It sounds to me as though it's there's kind of like an emotional training that's happening that we have to be careful of. It's kind of yeah. you know, like when you're training a dog um, and you have to be careful that unhelpful things that you do that you might not be aware of are right. actually training as well. If you don't have self-awareness, if you're operating on a bit of an autopilot, you might be unconsciously allowing that training to settle in that's like, okay, if this happens in the studio, I feel bad and I avoid doing that again. And all of that can happen, like you say, on an autopilot and you're training, your brain's going, okay, noted, that didn't feel good. I like yes. avoiding things that don't feel good. So yes. we're not going to do that again. And now next time you come around, like the way I described at the beginning, you're thinking, oh, it's studio morning. I'm going to go into the studio. And you have this uneasy feeling, but you don't necessarily know why. It's because the brain's gone or the mind or the body is going, hmm, let's check our files on going into the studio. <laughs> exactly. Oh, here's this under... <laughs> We've filed this under do not go, stop. <laughs> exactly. Totally, yeah. totally. Because I think there's so much happening. This is another example of just that experience is where... Maybe you're making something and it's not working, or maybe it is working. And then you're like, let me just hop on Instagram for a little bit, you know, and let me just sit down and scroll. Let me uh, just, let then, me just. Let me yeah. just. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, look at all these really beautiful paintings and, or the opposite. You're like, oh, if they're doing it, why can't I do it? And so we, we have these associations that make us start processing things. And our brain is literally like, trying to make sense of it you just mm. did this now you're doing this now you're seeing this now you're feeling this what should we do about that next time do you know what I yeah. mean yeah I'm not sure that I have thought of it quite that way of like as though my mind is a rambunctious sort of toddler you know and <laughs> yes. if I let it go by its own devices yep. and yep. let this info go in it's gonna go well this is you know file that information we're going to behave like this. We're going to do that. It's so, uh, it's almost like being more careful about the information that I'm feeding my mind because, like you say, it's going to just process the patterns. It's going to say no to stuff that feels bad, yes <laughs> to the Tim Tam yeah, that feels yeah, good. And yeah, exactly. It's going to it's, keep running it's that gonna program. Be like, that Tim Tam, that was really good. That yeah. that made me feel tick. good. That made me feel, tick, tick. <laughs> so next time you go into the studio, if you do get back there and you feel bad, be sure to do that again. I've got to be careful what code I'm putting into the program, basically. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the other things I think that happens, um, you know, on um, Instagram, there's a lot of challenges that happen, like people put together these challenges, the 30 day challenge, a drawing challenge. Um, I did a color breakthrough challenge and these challenges, the people who create them have good intentions of it. And there's definitely things we can learn from that. But I think sometimes as artists, we're not really taking in like, is this helping my practice right now move forward? Mm. Is it focused? Is it going to work towards the direction that I want? Is that it, I want, yeah. It's going to enlighten my practice, enlighten me about myself. I've heard artists talk about how they feel like they're just going from one challenge to the next challenge as a, as a thing to do, as an activity. I really never felt that connected to challenges because mm. I always felt that they, for me, felt like a distraction. And I never felt like I was really going to make progress on my work. And make progress in the way that, that I know you like to make, that is yeah. personalized and based on your own values. And it's interesting looking at that example in the light of what you've just said what can be happening there is again the way where the the code that we're feeding into our mind computer is 
the, the nice thing about challenges is you show up, you meet a, a, a kind of a, a checklist that someone set up for you. So if number one, the checklist is set up by someone else. So you don't have that anxiety or am I doing the right thing? Am I doing yeah. the wrong thing? There's a clear set of instructions, which brain loves, mind yep. loves. Yep. And then you get the satisfaction of ticking it off. Don't we yep. all love to tick and it's, off a list? It's studio time, technically. Yep. So yep. we can feel like we're fulfilling. So there are a lot of Tim Tam-esque rewards yes. built in there yeah. which again Tons of rewards. We, just something to be careful of like you say because then you can get on a bit of a um the same thing you've you've set that program in place so now let's do another challenge let's do another thing and not slow down enough not get it comes back which we have talked about but I think it comes back to the root of it that what we feel certainly you and I Michelle and I I think a good number of artists feel in their hearts is going to be a really rewarding and the direction that they want to go in as artists actually requires being with yourself and your own thoughts and your own kind of creative being and allowing uncertainty and having discovery and all of that kind of space does not feel as quick rewards and I don't know, quick dopamine hits, whatever it is, as kind of checking off a list that someone else is giving yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And I think there is something that is nice about someone else putting that all together. But I think what I've found and um, what I'm a big believer in is coming up with our own challenges, like creating mm -hmm. our own challenges that I've used the word container on here mm -hmm. before and really finding a way to look at things closer. Like I do think the the thing that's great about challenges is that you you are looking at a particular area of your practice in a focused way. I love that about them. But I think as artists, the, the, the goal is to work on challenges that we can start to create ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. I think of mm -hmm. Helen Frankenthaler and mm -hmm. I'm thinking if she were in our world today, would she be on Instagram doing challenges? <laughs> I don't, I don't know if she would. I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. I, or I just would she think... have discovered and, and made those kind of leaps of discovery that she did um, if that's what she was doing? Right. I don't think right. you, you make that kind, those kind of big leaps as part of that kind of practice. Um, and what I like about the idea of creating our own challenges is that you're not saying all structure's bad. You know, you have to swim in this sea of sickening uncertainty to be an artist. <laughs> right. Take, yeah. Get to know what, uh, you know, what those habits are that your mind enjoys. Those, that sense yeah. of, of how much structure and how much freedom and kind of work with that. Yeah, yeah. So you can, you can, you can have can. The, the payoff of, of working through and, and saying, yeah, I am showing up every day or however many times a week. Yeah, I am doing this. I am doing that. Because for me personally, I find that is really important from a kind of sustainability point of view. I do think that, and this is getting to know what you personally, uh, what gives you energy and what motivates yeah. you. Because I feel that having a large, undefined, kind of never-ending project of be a better artist yeah. can be really overwhelming, right? Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And then you can, you can kind of go, well, I don't know when that's going to end. I don't know how much work that could take. I don't know I'm, I'm what I should you. be doing. <laughs> So of course that you can maybe feel a little reluctant to t to to step into that first thing on a Monday morning. Right. So having yeah. you know the yeah. structure of um of some kind of steps to that is great and having the feedback of okay I you know achieved what I wanted to achieve this week or I I did you know it's like I did enough. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying in a really long-winded way. I do feel like I get energy from having a sense of of setting some guidelines of what will feel enough 
for me to do this week and and thinking about that in a conscious way instead of going into the week feeling like well I need to do all the things and I need to do them all really well going back to what we talked about no um, pressure last episode yeah <laughs> and so and I need to have it all done yesterday like that's a recipe yeah. for both not doing anything and also feeling really bad about it as well yeah. whereas it's a bit of a virtuous cycle if I feel if I can set up what can I imagine would be a great thing to at least get me forward three steps, make it a reasonable, achievable thing. So that makes it less overwhelming to face, like something that you can go in and start doing in the studio. And also at the end of this week, I will feel a lot better about it than I would yeah. have if I had all these lofty ambitions and spent the whole time eating Tim Tams. I'm just going to keep <laughs> saying Tim Tams. <laughs> there's some in my fridge right now and I can't stop thinking about them. <laughs> but it's true, I think, and what you were describing, I was even getting anxious because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so much. It's so big. I just, I can't work like that. I got to break it down, break it down mm. into mm -hmm. small chunks. So I guess what I'm saying is just to wrap up that challenges I did it was really I, I think we can create challenges for ourselves but we really want to look at how can it work to dissect areas of interest for ourselves that matter to us you know and instead of using a challenge as a distraction how can we use it as a way to inform us and enlighten us I think another thing is um, not feeling connected to our work or maybe feeling yeah. like a purpose. Um, that sometimes feels like we're making random work. Maybe we're all over the place. And I think sometimes when we have those feelings come up, we can distract ourselves with things. We can also make it mean like, oh, maybe we're not any good. You know, mm -hmm. I think we can feel a bit lost. I know we've talked about this personally. Yeah, definitely. I could definitely, if, if you get in a state where you're not getting into the studio and that, and the longer it drags on and the more stuck you feel, you, it can, you know, then you start piling some judgment on top of it. Then, you know, add a, a generous helping of self doubt because how am I an artist if I'm not actually like what kind of an artist can't? go and make some damn art like, what's so going let's, on yeah and if we were looking at that like then you're looking at that and there's this emotional response again happening mm -hmm. what do you do when you feel that way what do you do Beck? do you go hit the tim tams <laughs> i mean <laughs> what's <laughs> i mean you know mm. like this is where we have to go like does and then does that make you start avoiding the studio do you mm. find excuses like oh i really need to go to that appointment to pick up you know, my laundry soap, like I'm just making that yeah. up. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Like all but of a no, sudden. That's a good, I think that's actually a good example because one of the things that I can find is you do that kind of procrastinating technique where you find other tasks to do, which you can tell yourself do need to be done. Do you yes. know what I mean? So yes. they're more day-to-day -day things or even in areas of other work that just feel where you feel more competent, where you feel more yeah. that the steps are clearer. And so you go, oh, okay, I'll, I'm, that's an unknown area in the studio. So I'll leave that and I'll focus on this, you know, computer work or this admin work or this other thing that I'm working on where it's just following some steps through, you know, I, I feel that way. Um, I know there are lots of people out there going admin work, computer work. Oh, <laughs> ew, I avoid that like anything. But if for it's you, it's a comfort well, yeah, zone. Yeah, it's something you know it. But you can tick off and feel like you've done something. Um, unfortunately, the reality is, like, as I said, I, I feel like at the end of the week, it's almost as bad as the Tim Tams. I mean, maybe you have done the admin work, but you, you don't necessarily you feel any better about it because you haven't done the thing which is really answering the deeper values that you have, what yeah. you really want. When I hear you say that too, I'm thinking it's it's so much pressure that we kind of you know, live in when we, then we're, we're like, oh my gosh, I just did another week where I didn't get the thing done. Mm -hmm. And now it's not happening. And the other thing I wanted to say is, I hear you say like, this is known, this is unknown. And I'm thinking, if you let your brain choose something known versus unknown, it's always going to choose known. 
Yeah. It's it's yeah. never going to be like let's go do the unknown because unknown is fearful to the to the brain, the pr protective mm -hmm. brain. So that's where if we can step back a little bit and say and I and I I jokingly say I have a conversation with myself, but sometimes I'm like I got you. Don't worry about this. <laughs> We're going to be okay, right, you know, because right. I do feel that that good old little what is lizard brain? I think yep. Seth Godin explains Seth Godin that best. Um, that lizard brain literally will make those decisions. We're not even aware. It's just, mm -hmm. it's like, no, that's known. Let's go do that. That's way easier. This is, this yeah. is unknown. And I think one of part of that lizard brain is that it's, um, primal kind of built in thing. Like you say, it's, you know, a little brain nerve zap that just goes, yep, no. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's not do that. It's automatic. Um, in an instant, in an instant. And it isn't necessarily tied to, a series of logical thinking steps. It right. can translate just as a feeling in your body, like I was saying about just no, a don't physical, go. Don't yeah. go into that room. Don't go yes. through that door. Don't. Yeah. When you, you don't just, go in that room, your body just swivels the other direction, and you don't even think about why. It's just okay. I felt the swivel. Yeah. I'm going to listen. <laughs> yeah. But then after the swivel happens, and then you haven't been in the studio, and I'm saying you mm. is in all of us. Um, For sure. Then we make up this, we have this emotional response to it as well. Like, I just probably am not cut out for this. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Like, I can't mm -hmm. get myself in there. And then we take that emotional response to how we handled it. And we turn that into proof that we shouldn't go to the studio. So totally. this is the part of this really complicated automatic response, emotional response to that response. And it's <laughs> It can this get thing. to be a really uh, vicious cycle. The more that you have, as you're saying, you have those sort of emotional memories, that, that program of I'm going to avoid that feeling of uncertainty, that feeling of unknown. And then the more that you avoid it, then you have, like I said, the self-judgment, the self-doubt. But the more that you avoid it also, the more that it kind of builds up. Mm -hmm. it's like It's almost like builds up a negative charge that, that keeps you away from it even more. Because I think on the flip side, when we can show up, even in really small ways, even in a, in a little bit at a time, we, that's where we the the virtuous cycle you start to build a momentum you start to build some evidence that you know as we've said you're not going to die in the studio by <laughs> throwing some pain around and it gets a little bit easier each time but overcoming like the the more that you're away and then overcoming that resistance it's quite difficult i guess it's like like an exercise program let's say yeah like, yeah know, going back <laughs> yeah. to the gym when you haven't been for three months or six months like the longer you go the harder it feels to pick up the threads and and the more you but the more you can do it more regularly somehow the it's, easier i definitely feel that yeah, about studio yeah. work yeah and the other thing that i know in addition to being as regular as i can is in like even if it's just you know for an hour half an hour in between you know the kids come home and dinner um i i always make sure that i leave out the stuff that really gets me excited you know oh, because that's a great idea when i go in and look at something and my heart skips a beat like oh my gosh that's really fun that's cool then i'm really drawn to it and i think the reason why I think someone had told me that when, because I resist exercise. I have such good intentions. And I always think about how painful it is. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, doing squats. Like, I just don't like burpees. I don't like squats. Like, I, I think of the pain in it. And then someone once said like, well, actually, I think it was my husband. He was like, don't you think about the good outcome that you get instead of the pain? And I was like, oh, hadn't thought of that. Now with that, when I do resist doing what I said I was going to do in the, in the workout area, mm -hmm. I focus on like, oh, yeah, it feels really good to feel strong, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I try to train my brain to think about the the things that feel good and why I should exercise. And I think that's true for the studio. If we can leave these clues mm -hmm. of too, yeah. these little nuggets, you know, that we've found, whether they're little tiny 
insignificant things that we think are insignificant and Mm. but they're inspiring enough and i really truly believe this like i think one of the biggest challenges we have as artists is we're not pushing ourselves to be inspired at a really deep level Mm. and that for me if i'm not inspired on a deep level i'm not going to be that interested in getting in the studio it just doesn't Mm -hmm. call me so i think one of the challenges we have is to really push ourselves in that you know like what gets you so excited you're like can't wait to tell the person in the house because you're so annoying and they're like wow someone had a good day in the studio yeah how can we push ourselves in that way does that make sense yeah like kind of making the studio the tim tam yeah that, you exactly. know like <laughs> i can't wait like try and keep me out <laughs> yes I'll push you out of the way to get there. Exactly, exactly. So if we can surround ourselves with these clues, it's the things that show you why you should get in there. Um, I like the idea of having out some things, as you say, that make your heart skip a beat, like some really lovely things, like maybe your favorite materials as well that you can just start with when you step in I like the idea and we talked about this in the last episode of setting a standard which is achievable and kind of self-rewarding and self-perpetuating so like the standard might be instead of feeling like I haven't actually got back in the studio now for two weeks or a month or three months whatever it is now I have to go in and spend a whole day it can be like 20 minutes it can be yeah. 10 minutes, whatever amount of time. I think that's um, actually a, a tip I've read about setting habits generally. Like you keep making the time lower and lower until it seems to you a completely ridiculous suggestion. Like if someone says to you, well, could you go in and draw on some paper for five minutes? And you're like, what is that going to achieve? That is a ridiculous suggestion. Get to your ridiculous yeah. point. And do that for a week, like for seven days in a row, you start chipping away at that momentum. I think it really is about chipping away again in small amounts. I'm a huge believer that in that. And and even yesterday when I was working on some stuff that I should be finishing, I literally mm. stopped. I was like, nope, I'm going to take a little bit of time. And a little bit of time for me is like an hour. For me, I'm like, I'm fine if I spend an hour on this. And I just took some clips out and some push pins and I just put a bunch of stuff up, put a bunch of stuff that I felt really excited about, inspired by. And you know how much energy that gave the room? It just Uh shifted everything. It was like, here's this room that it has a few pieces in it, but it's, it's a clean slate. Yeah. But it also didn't have this, you know, feeling and this energy that I was looking to would pour into my work. So, and all I had to do, which was funny because I keep going, I've got to go to office works and print out some stuff, which by the way, I still do. But <laughs> I have a yeah. ton of stuff that I just collect, you know, tears from magazines, photos from other things, color studies that I've done, my own work, you know, that mm. I might have just tucked away, you know, in a drawer in a in a folio thing. Like pulling all that out and just hanging up stuff that feels inspiring that I really, really love, it just completely shifted the room and the energy. So that's I love that. And something it, that's my Tim Tam. <laughs> well, I love that because I've actually been thinking about that in the last couple of days. We went away for a weekend, um, stayed at an Airbnb in the country, beautiful view, surrounded by trees and birds, lovely change of scenery, change of energy, just being out of the house because, you know, I'm I'm working at home. I'm living here. This is my studio area. I walk through my my studio area is the space between the bedroom and the rest of the house. So I'm walking back and forth and sort of in that space all the time. So that's funny, isn't it? Because I'm talking about resistance to go to the studio. I actually go to the studio. (laughs) Regularly. You're there a lot. I don't stop. <laughs> you don't in stop. The studio and use the space. Um, but I was really thinking coming back from that time away. This goes to what you were saying earlier about we need to be careful about the kind of habits and programs that we put in place 
for ourselves and be aware of them when they start to go off track because I feel like my energy in this space yeah. is a bit stale at the moment. I was thinking, how can I shake that up? Because there's the there's the space where you just get a bit blind to the stuff yeah, that's totally. on the walls and a bit blind to what everything seems a bit same old, same old. And also the kind of habits, like a, a morning habit. You can get into the habit of grabbing your cup of tea and scrolling Instagram. And when you yeah. do that every morning for a few weeks or a few months, it gets very ingrained and you can be unaware of how much that is throwing you off the path that you want to be on. So it's yeah. how can I shake up the space? How can I clear the space a little bit? How can I change the energy around this, around how I relate to it and also around maybe those habits that I've built? You know, am I often sitting in my studio space and scrolling Instagram. Like, worst combo. Like, I want to create a space in the studio that feels different, that feels yeah. separate from those kind of outside influences, that feels a bit more like a sanctuary. Yeah. So I have been thinking about that the last couple of days. I, I have no particular answers, but that's – I was really feeling the energy coming back from an outside space, thinking, oh, I want a fresh – a fresh Yeah. Look. I – for me – the energy of the space makes or breaks how excited I am. Um, mm -hmm. We just built this really big oversized drying rack, we, my husband, <laughs> and it yeah. was so big and it, it's an or its original spot was like right in the middle of the studio and it was just not flow for me. I was like, this won't work. This won't work. We mm -hmm. need to totally rearrange the studio. And I have white painting tarps that cover things. Like I have to have it like as clean as possible in, in the sense of not junky. That's just how I work. I don't know why, mm. but I don't like it feeling junky. I like to make chaos with my art, but I don't like it to feel junky because I have too much stuff. So anyway, we re rearranged and it really left this clean blank slate for, you know, new work, which is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, and then I've got this board. Why don't I push some stuff on that? And, you know, but it was really like purposeful stuff as opposed to like, let me just hang up stuff. For me, the, the space, it just gets stale. And then it's like, mm. I just, I tend to just completely blow it up. Like, and sometimes rearranging, I rearrange a lot. I know my yeah. <laughs> husband gets so annoyed. I'm like, can we just move that table over here? And, you know, sometimes it takes us a whole weekend to do it. Yeah. But I yeah. do feel that that is, for me, it's really helpful. And it does give me something to look forward to. And again, mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it goes back to that thing of if you have stuff that inspires you enough and you just get caught up in looking at it, you can't help but want to respond to it. And that's, that's where your space can either be a distraction. Like if you're not mm. that interested in your physical space, but you're really interested in scrolling, that scrolling is a distraction, you yeah. know? So I always save my scrolling for later in the day because if yeah. I get on, I'm just, it just sets me off in the wrong direction and sucks so, you in and completely yeah, sucks. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing. Uh, definitely. And I, I don't know if it's – I know some people are more night owls. I'm definitely more of a morning person. Mm -hmm. And it feels like being protective of that morning space, that mind space, you know, the physical space, not having a lot of outside influences and Instagram and yeah. noisy stuff. Yeah, I, I feel like it's around creating a space that's so enticing that you really can't wait to rush in and be in it. Yeah, and not be if possible <laughs> sidetracked by distractions or excuses. And again, yeah. I I don't think we're all we're none of us are perfect, you know. And I don't think it's something that goes away. I think we always have to mm. kind of be aware of it. One other thing that came to my mind as we we're talking about this is, um, in selling our art, you know, sometimes we'll put it work out there and it and it doesn't sell, and mm -hmm. you know. This makes me laugh because I know there's this thing of like well, on Instagram, it should look like it sold right away because if it's been sitting yeah. around in your studio, <laughs> must not be any good, yeah. which is completely ridiculous as we know. One of the things that I've seen in myself and in other artists is in, when something doesn't sell or maybe something doesn't sell right away, it doesn't always mean that it's 
terrible pieces of art, but yet there's automatic responses that we have to that as well, you know, where we're like, oh, well, that didn't sell and that must not mean it's really good. And then how we feel about that is like, well, next time I go in the studio, if I don't make something that works, maybe I shouldn't go in. And So much, like you say, that we're carrying around. That reminded me of the other thing, which when you do, when you're dealing with this kind of resistance and then you do get in there for five minutes or 10 minutes or maybe an hour, whatever it is, you know what you shouldn't do? <laughs> Judge what you did in that five minutes or 10 minutes and turn around and go, okay, I've, I've overcome this kind of two months yeah. of inertia or whatever it is. And now the first thing I'm going to do, the very first thing I, I start to make after that I'm going to go, well, that was terrible. <laughs> Hello. Totally. Totally. Hello, brain training. Don't come brain and try training. this again. <laughs> and then the brain's going to go, don't go in there again. That didn't work. <laughs> so I think we just have to really, my message to myself and yeah. to all of us, I think, is we just have to really be aware of what automatic brain training we're doing mm. and really look at the facts. I mean, one of the things that I find, especially with the selling part of it, is that sometimes it just wasn't the right eyeballs on yep. the actual pieces of art. I, I've said this before, my art right now, if I took it back to where I grew up, it would not sell. And mm. those that's because it's the wrong eyeballs for the kind of artwork that I make. So I think we have to really sort of separate out um, audiences and knowing mm. who we're selling to. If you do an Instagram post and no one's responding, like, did the right people see it? Were you speaking to mm. the people? Like, all of that stuff. Don't automatically assume that it didn't work. And yeah. one of the things that I laugh about, and this is me laughing at myself, by the way, if we yeah. think of like, oh, well, Instagram only showed it to 100 people. Imagine a hundred people in a in a room and you were speaking to them. Mm-hmm. That's a mm-hmm. lot of people, folks. Yeah. Like, what do we think we need? Thousands and thousands? How many paintings do we have? We have to really stop making these stories mean more yeah. than what they really mean. The you stories know? and the assumptions and the kind of, as you say, automatic responses to things trip us up big time. Yeah. I don't know. I'm feeling even more excited to go and refresh the studio and make it. Yeah. I'm going to give some solid thought to this now. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like I need some fresh energy. Fresh air. Awesome. Let's throw open the windows. I mean, we're coming out of winter here in Australia, so it's starting to get a little bit warmer so we can. Yes. I do love that about being able to throw the windows open, a little bit of sunshine in, a bit of fresh air and um, yeah, look to create some inviting spaces. Yes. That we can't wait to rush into. Exactly. If you're enjoying the podcast and would like to show us some support, we would love for you to share your favorite episode with a friend. And as always, if you'd like to say hello, just swing by our Instagram at unearthingart. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time.